All right, guys, one of the number one challenges that you guys have given me with all of my DIY guitar tutorial stuff is that you wanna see me build a do-it-yourself amp kit. So that's what I have here. This is the KLD uh, Pilot 15 I got on eBay. Let's go ahead and give this a try. nicely packaged. I think it did come from China. It took a while to get here. And I did write KLD and I told them what I was going to be doing here on my channel. And they offered to send me a few extras to help out with the build, which was very nice of them. So I got some tubes, which would normally not be included. Usually you would choose your own tubes. And they also sent me some other stuff like knobs and like some KLD envelopes. I also ordered this pre-made amp chassis, okay? This is by one of their sister companies that's located here in the US. And I'm just not much of a metal worker. I'm, I wish that I was much better at it, but honestly, something like this is just way above my pay grade. So I went ahead and just ordered one. So those are some things to consider as extra cost if you're gonna be building an amp kit is you're gonna to need to buy tubes, which is kind of cool because you get to select your own and that's kind of what makes it your own custom amp. And then you're gonna to need to build or buy a chassis. And again, that's another cool way that you can customize your amplifier. I'm excited to assemble this thing. It is a printed circuit board style amp kit. I figured I would start out with something really simple to begin with. This one specifically is a clone of Fender style, like Hot Rod Deluxe, Hot Rod DeVille style amps. Um, but they do have some hand-wired versions that copy Box and Marshall and stuff like that, which are kind of cool. I don't know if I'm gonna be good at this. It makes me a little bit nervous um, dealing with the deadly high voltages of a 15 watt tube amp, but you know what? No guts, no glory. All right, let's go ahead and unbox this thing. As I'm pulling this thing out, I am being very careful not to touch any of the metal connectors because I don't know if these capacitors have been discharged or not. And those are what hold the deadly voltages that are going to kill us. From what I've heard, those things can hold some pretty deathly voltages. This thing came packed pretty nicely. I mean, look at all this. I would not be concerned about buying one of these amp kits and having it shipped from China. All right, oh, that must be the reverb tank. Here are the tubes. These are not included in the kit. So we got, oh, shizzle. That's exactly what you want to do. Drop them on the ground. These are just kind of generic branded tubes. These must be the preamp tubes because they are tiny. We got 12 AX7B preamp tubes. A couple of 6L6GC by Electron Tube Company. And then I've got my power output transformer. Let's look at the instructions and see if I can make sense of all this. All right, again, first thing that I'm going to do because I'm a little bit scared of this thing is make sure all of these capacitors are completely discharged. And the way I'm gonna do that is carefully, without touching any of these metal solder joints here on the back, um, I'm just gonna one at a time check with each capacitor and it's pretty easy to tell which ones are capacitors because they have much bigger solder joints. Um, so I'm just gonna test them with a voltmeter, but I'm also going to modify my voltmeter to make sure I'm being a little bit extra safe. I'm gonna add these wooden dowels to it just so that I can make sure I keep my hands off of the actual connectors, just in case. Um, these are insulated, so they should be safe. But again, feel much better if I just do it this way. I'm gonna set my voltmeter to the highest DC voltage setting that I have. I'm looking for voltage stored up in these capacitors that exceeds 10 volts. Anything higher than 10 volts is considered dangerous enough to shock you. Um, not to kill you, but to shock you, and that's no fun. So um, anything higher than 10 volts, and I'm gonna need to safely discharge it. Um, anything less than that should be fine. Okay, no readings on any of those, that's good. This thing has never been powered up, so there shouldn't be any voltage in it, but again, I don't wanna gamble my life on a Chinese factory. Okay, now that I have uh, safely checked that all of these capacitors aren't carrying any voltage, I'm going to safely bend and break apart these circuit boards. Here we go. 
That was actually pretty painless. All right, so that's one down. Then we got this one here. That's why you want to make sure you discharge your capacitors because I just stuck my finger right underneath that one. So <laughs> if that thing had been live, I'd have gotten shocked. Oops, okay. Oops, that's what you want to hear. Okay, that one looks like it broke off safely. There we go. There we go, that one came a little easier. There we go. Now I guess we go ahead and mount it in our chassis. All right, so here is my test build, and that's just to make sure I know where everything is supposed to go and that all the holes line up properly with my chassis. So guys, I'm very pleased to say that I actually got this thing together correctly on my first try. Now, KLD does send you a digital download when you order one of these amps, and it's got a full wiring schematic as well as some pictures to help you figure out where you're supposed to plug in things and where you're supposed to solder things, and it made building this thing super easy. Honestly, if I have one criticism about this thing is that the build was a little bit too easy. I mean, being a printed circuit board design, most of the hard work was already done. Soldering a few joints, if you can follow a wiring diagram and follow some pictures, um, you can have this thing together really quickly. I mean, it took me three hours total, start to finish, from unboxing to completely built. But that was because I was just taking so much extra time to make sure that every little component was double checked and triple checked, plugged in the right place. Again, because of amp voltages just scare me, so I just double, triple, quadruple checked even some of the connections. And um, also, I was setting up a camera for filming and all that stuff in between. So the average person, I think, would be able to have this thing together in under two hours, no problem. So definitely a cool little Saturday afternoon project. Um, obviously, it's far from done. I'm gonna be building an enclosure for it that matches the enclosure for my cab, and that's gonna give this thing a real finished look. So be on the lookout for that video. But in the meantime, I just wanted to talk to you about some of the settings. Now, even though the circuitry on this thing is based on a vintage Fender tube amp, um, there are certainly some upgrades on here that you're not gonna find on a vintage tube amp. Firstly, there is a power attenuator on the back, and you can choose to bypass that if you want. There's instructions for connections both ways, but I like power attenuation. So that is able to knock this thing from 15 watts down to seven watts for a little bit quieter performance. Also, you'll find on here, this is a normal or a bright switch. So I'll just demonstrate that for you real quick. So that's normal, and this is bright. So that's pretty cool. So then there's also two inputs, and so you got your normal, and then you've got a high gain input. So I'll demonstrate those for you real quick. So that's pretty cool. Then you've got your gain knob, that's normal, master volume's way over here. And then we got our reverb, which is foot switchable. You can either turn it on here, or I have it hooked up to a foot switch. And it is a spring reverb, and it sounds a little cheesy like a spring reverb. <laughs> then you got your typical bass, middle, and treble controls, and I have them just set to flat, because that actually sounds pretty good. We have a boost switch, so. really hoping that uh, with a two channel foot switch that the reverb and the boost would be both be foot switchable but they're not unfortunately only the reverb is foot switchable and then on the back we got outputs for 4 8 and 16 ohm speaker cabs which is awesome and then we've got that power attenuator that I told you about so you can select between 7 watts or the full 15 watts and then of course we have an output for the foot switch and then we've got an effects loop which I don't have any effects hooked up right now so I would assume that it works. I believe this kit currently runs $150, which for $150, you get a really nice full featured amp that sounds great. And you can run this thing uh, as a clean pedal platform, which is kind of the setting that I have it on right now. Or of course you can use the high gain input and brighten it up and run the boost. And then, you know, turn down your master, crank up the gain. And 
then you can get that awesome vintage overdrive tube tone out of it and then you know put some pedals in front of it to really push it you know maybe turn the gain down but put a full drive or a tube screamer in front of it and um, you just get really good awesome vintage tube overdrive tones out of it so overall i am super impressed with this tube amp kit um, i am definitely going to be interested to try out some of kld's other amp kits because like i said this one was a little bit too easy i feel like i mean if you have any soldering ability whatsoever like I said, you could have this thing together in a couple of hours. So I might want to try out, they have a couple of hand-wired tube kits that I think would be a whole lot of fun. Obviously those require quite a bit more technical skill, but those hand-wired kits appeal to me a little bit more because I feel like if you can build one, that's where the real value is going to be. Because hand-wired 15 watt tube amps start at thousands of dollars. And so if you can pick up a kit for $150, $200 and put it together yourself, then you could get a boutique grade you know, hand wired tube amp for significantly less. So plus you can swap out different components and that's a whole nother rabbit hole that I could go down with, you know, resistors and capacitors and swap them out and get different tones and, you know, really build up your perfect dream tube amp. So um, I'm definitely excited to try those out in the future, but first let's go ahead and finish this thing up in next week's video. I'm going to build the enclosure and I'm going to swap out the tubes for some higher end tubes. Um, I'm going to show you guys what I feel like are the best budget tube upgrades that you can do and see if we can't get a little bit more tone out of this thing. All right, I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars, and I'll see you in next week's video.